Hey everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. I am Austin Ward. You know him, it's Zach Bourne, and you know what time it is. Can we can we call it a silver bullet breakdown, Zach? I think we can. After Saturday night, those guys earned some respect, man. They were flying around to the football, and even though it was Akron, they took care of business and performed the way they should have been performing all year. All right, so it will be a silver bullet buck IQ breakdown with Zach Bourne. 59-7 to was the win for Ohio State over Akron, and you look at this game and Yes, there was one touchdown drive early in the first quarter that they gave up, and the rest pretty solid from a bunch of young Ohio State defenders. And uh, I think you'd say for the first time this was a game that almost start to finish went the way it was supposed to, almost felt a little bit normal for the Buckeyes again. Completely agree with you. You know, people who want a perfect game, perfect games are impossible, right? Yes, you know, Akron drove down the field early and scored a touchdown, but the Bucks defense responded and they played like they needed to perform. And I love the youth movement movement that we saw Saturday night, a bunch of young guys running after the football, getting after it. That is silver bullet defense. You get some turnovers, you got the pick six. I mean, everything that a silver bullet defense is supposed to look like, that's what you saw Saturday night, and it was that youth movement that I think sparked it. You know, there's a lot of, like, you know, value to those early season non-conference games. The Big Ten wants to have stuff like Ohio State, Minnesota open the season, and that's all, you know, great that we get to dive right into competition from the start and meaningful games. But I just – I can't help but wonder right now, Zach, if these two games had been first – And they just flopped it around, like what the conversation about this team would have been like if a Cam Martinez or Tyleek Williams or Jack Sawyer or JT Tuimoloau or Cody Simon, on down the list with, you know, Denzel Burke, seven, eight first-time starters. Like, would that stuff have happened? Would we be having the same conversation? In some ways, yes, it's good that Ohio State found out that maybe there were some schematic issues or staff alignment things that they wanted to change. And on the other hand, Maybe they would have just been building up what they wanted if they'd got some non-conference games. Nothing you can do about it. It's just something that I'm thinking about because it does look like the future is brightening pretty quickly for this unit. It's six one way, half dozen the other, right? And if these games were flipped, the 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 two we've just had with the first two games of the season, who knows what we would have seen? Who knows how this team would have performed? The great thing is this team faced some adversity the first two weeks, which is why you – even the first three weeks, which is why you saw some of these young players able to get as much PT as they did Saturday night. And here's the other thing. You know, everyone wants to take the good with the bad, right? Well, if the Oregon game had just happened and you had some of these issues and you're going now on the road to Rutgers and you're starting Big Ten game, Big Ten play, it would have been a lot harder to make some of these adjustments – going into Big Ten play than it would have been after the last two games. So, you know, yeah, you can look at it both ways. But like I said, it's six, you know, six one way, half dozen the other. I'm just happy that you're starting to see the silver bullet defense. Some of these young guys get on the field, make plays, and you're starting to see this team build momentum. We know it. We talk about it every single year. College football is all about the momentum you can build and the confidence that you have as a team inside that locker room. After this past week's game, they're starting to build some confidence, and you would love to see that moving forward going into Big Ten play. All right, one of those guys the last couple of weeks came a little bit off the radar from his recruitment, a little bit off the radar from who we thought might be helping Ohio State and those rushmen right away, Tyleek Williams being disruptive up there. So today we're going to sh- let Zach Bourne dig into the trenches a little bit, see what's going on up there, uh, and get into whether this pass rush now uh, is back to where it needs to be or, or showing that signs of progress. Zach going to get into it like only he can right here on a silver bullet breakdown for Buck IQ. Let's roll the tape. All right, Zach, you look at this and give a little credit to Jerron Cage here next to him as well. That's somebody else who's nice for Ohio State to have in the lineup. But Tyler Williams just keeps finding himself in the backfield. Second one, a little run stuffing. He does. And the common thing that we're going to look through these plays is just the relentless effort. And it's hard to find that in a big guy down in the middle. Right. But with but with Tyleek Williams here, absolutely love the effort, love the way that he gets on an edge, especially as D lineman and gets penetration. You see, yes, strong cage does a great job here. But early on in this game, and we saw it throughout the night, Tyleek Williams has been getting pressure and creating havoc in the backfield. And, you know, we keep talking about it. It's a lot of matter of getting out there and doing it. You know, practice is one thing, and you see these guys flash, and Tulsa and Akron aren't the best teams Ohio State will play, but you've been through this. You know that you need these games to start playing better. The game reps are just different. 
hundred percent. And when things are going full go, especially with a defense alignment, you still have to be able to read and react. You have to see what kind of blocking scheme you're getting in, in front of you and be able to pick an edge and go. And even right here, this, this kind of rep you only truly get in a game. Yeah. You can try it and practice and do everything, but this is a cross game here with JT and Ty Leak. And this is run perfectly. And the reason why is because Ty Leak gets off the ball so well and goes into that B gap. So then JT is able to get around. Well, obviously there's miscommunication on the garden tackle. This is very hard to pick up as an offense lineman. If the defensive line stunts, if they do it the right way. And you see, this is two true freshmen here. And this is absolutely unbelievable. Ty Leak, great penetration, getting the backfield in the closing speed, man. This is a kid who's at way more athletic than what people think for how big he is. Yeah. This, as you described there, like he, the way this is designed by Larry Johnson, Zach, he's trying to set up JTT, right? This is the play this, should this, work for him. This is a complete setup. For people who, who are watching this play, this is a complete setup, especially uh, – uh, essentially, Ty Leak right now is, is being the, the, the whatever it's called, right? He's the guy who's just going in, and he's supposed to go through the guard into the tackle so then the guard thinks he's getting upfield and JT can come around. But – Obviously, Tyleek realizes, hey, there's a miscommunication. I'm on the tackle's edge. I'm going to get off. And I'm going to get after the quarterback. This is just great reaction here by Tyleek. But, yes, essentially he's the pawn, and he's taking out two guys to let JT fold back underneath. And Tyleek is essentially supposed to keep contained in that situation, but he sees what's going on. He has the whereabouts to make an adjustment and get after the quarterback. Yeah, and then you see him doing a couple plays. You're talking about that awareness. That was an example. Seeing, obviously, the sack then seeing a play coming and grabbing somebody in the hole and then running it down there. So just a couple other examples of what he can do where it's not just solely about him trying to get after the passer, although that's what most of the attention is going to be on with him. Yeah. No doubt. In these past couple plays we've seen, this is a kid who's a big guy, right, and he's a true freshman. That last play he was on the other side of the hash, runs upfield, runs all the way back and makes the play. This you see it too. Yes, even though it's six, seven yards down the field, this is a kid who's getting penetration, sees the pass, turns and sprints after the football. This is where this is where the defense, this is the attitude where it's built. You see, you watch film on Sunday morning and you see these big defense linemen running downfield making hits like this. Next thing you know, later on the later on the year, that's going to turn into a fumble and it's going to be a huge turnover for the defense and that is where the effort and attitude comes into a defense right there and that's a young guy setting the tone for this football team. Yeah, that was that was seven yards down the field when the guy caught the football. Tyleek Williams got there quickly. It's just, you know, some of the basic stuff filling the run that you're expected to do at your Ohio State. But a lot of we've seen when Ohio State's been at its best, Zach, these guys that can play three technique or even knows Haskell Garrett did it last weekend. He was uh, one of his best games, an All-American type game. You get that pass rush from the interior. It really helps set Ohio State apart. I completely agree with you. And it's so hard to find a three technique that can rush like Ty, Ty, Tyleek Williams can right here. And I want people to realize like, hey, you know, normally that's why in the past you normally saw that NASCAR package where you throw four defensive ends in, you know, on a third down. Yes, this is third and goal, but you obviously it's about third and 15 or whatever it is from where the from where the ball is snapped. I want everyone to look at his hands right here. This is from a three technique true freshman that gets in here, uses his hands, extends, rips, and gets over on this offensive guard. That is unbelievable right there, use of his hands. He gets extension, he rips, he gets off, and makes a sack. I mean, a play like this is absolutely phenomenal, and especially from a three technique. You're normally seeing this from a Chase Young, a Bosa, one of those guys, even Jonathan Cooper last year. To get this out of your three technique is absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, we've seen that in the past. Like I threw out some names, but then you know Draymond Jones or uh, further back, Adolphus Washington maybe. Like When you move guys with defensive end you know, frames or athleticism and let them go to work on a guard, you can get some pretty good results. You most definitely can, especially for a big guy, right? And here you see it again. It's He's just learning to play with his hands so well. And this is the technical part. You know, people want to ask, why don't why don't more true freshmen play? You know, they're, they're highly regarded recruits, this and that. 
mostly because it's off of their athletic ability is their recruiting ranking, right? When you get to college and you're playing Division One football, even if it's against Akron, you have to be fundamentally sound. And that's where the hardest thing is to get up to speed in the college game because if you aren't fundamentally sound and you aren't using great technique, you're going to get beat no matter what. Yeah, there's sometimes maybe against Akron you can make up for it with your athletic ability, but for someone to be this technically sound with the use of, the, uh, of his hands, with his technique – at this age, so far advanced from where other uh, other guys are, and this is what you look for, that's when you know who's going to be a very special player. All right, the Buckeyes will need a lot more of that as they get back into Big Ten play, trying to defend that conference championship for the fifth time. They will head to Rutgers for an afternoon showdown, uh, a big one, a little bit more competition than maybe what Akron and Tulsa provided. We'll see. Uh, how the Buckeyes handle it. And then we'll be back right next uh, right next week here for Zach to break it down with some maybe earning that silver bullets for a couple weeks more. No, no doubt. And I'm excited to see these young guys play again. This is a Rutgers team. You know, hey, we used to talk, have a running joke about Rutgers. This is a team that went into the big house and but it was a 2013 game. So yep. this is a this is an opponent that has some respect by the Buckeyes, and you want to see more of these things. Some of these young guys flying around, some of this defense making plays, getting turnovers. This is going to be a road test for the Buckeyes. And from what we've seen this year, it's a respectable opponent. So, man, I can't wait to break them down next week again. All right, should be fun. Uh, thanks, as always, to Zach Bourne for his insight and analysis. For Zach, I'm Austin Ward. We'll see you next time at Letterman Row for Buckeye Cube.